Here we go, we are live, and we are just about to get John Marco in the house, guys. In the meantime, what questions do you have for him? I'm just going to pin that. Let's, uh, let's give an invite. Here we go. So, for anyone who doesn't know, this is another one of our ISA live streams during the whole COVID-19. All right, John Marco into the house. So, we'll just wait a moment. Remember, guys, drop some comments in the comment section for John Marco. I'll do my what best up, to... Boss? What up, John Marco? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I hope you're staying safe over there. Of course, doing my best. I mean, it's uh, not the easiest, is it? But how's the situation where you are? Um, it's it's honestly pretty bad. I'm not sure if you know, but New Jersey is probably the I think it's the highest state for the coronavirus in the United States. It's really bad over here. But I'm staying really? in my house with my family, trying to stay safe. Influences as many people to stay home, get through this. Well, I mean, you're one of the lucky ones that happens to have an insanely massive yeah. skate park in your back garden. So, I mean, that probably makes things a lot easier, right? Yeah, it definitely is an advantage having my own backyard skate park and having a in-home gym in my basement. I've been trying to work on my strength along with my riding <laughs> skills out in the back just to become an overall better athlete. So I definitely got an advantage Love this time. So, I mean, for anyone who doesn't know, this is obviously John Marco Gaydos, who is a current ISA world champion, absolute legend, and only 17 years old, which is just crazy in itself. And you, like, for anyone who doesn't know as well, he's got his own backyard skate park. And I don't mean just a tiny little skate park, right? Like, what are we talking about? Like, name some of the stuff you have in your back garden, literally in your back garden. It's crazy. Well, actually, as we speak, we are adding new parts of my skate park in. We're adding in a... Well, I'm actually not going to say what we're adding yet, because I want to get on Instagram. I want to know now. I'll tell you what we have so far. So we got... We're yeah. working with a resi box, a resi quarter, other quarter pipes just for, like, solid wood air riding. Um, we mm -hmm. got step-ups, a spine, and an airbag. And then we're adding a little something in, but you guys are going to have to wait for that. Nice, nice. All right, well, as anyway, I said, I'll do uh, viewers' questions. Guys, smash the questions right now. I'm going to just do a quick little uh, – I'll, I'll ask you a few. It's right. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, point them out for you. We'll just do quick fire ones, right? So uh, someone said, what is your favorite deck to ride? That's a nice, easy one. Favorite deck? Well, I would, I would have to say my John Marco deck. My new John Marco Complete is coming out very soon. This quarantine thing is holding everything up. But, guys, the oh, wait is worth it. The John Marco V3 Complete is coming out very soon, and you guys are going to have to hop on to that. It's very good. The graphics are sick, and it was definitely worth the wait. Uh, I think I saw a picture of it, right? Is it, is, you've released a picture already, haven't you, right? Yeah, yeah. We put in yeah. some like pictures up on Instagram. Um, nice. We just released the specs of it. Okay, cool. Uh, right, Ollie Scoot 20 says, how long have you been riding for? I've been riding for about six and a half years now, coming up on mm -hmm. seven years. Not bad, not bad. That's just crazy now. I've been riding for 20 years. You've been riding for six and a half. It's just it's yeah. mind blowing how you've done so much in six and a half years. And oh, you're no, still so crazy. young. I mean, to be ISA world champion, you're ISA world champion at 16 years old, right? Yeah. Like, that, that's just absolutely unbelievable. But anyway, I'm going to get back to a uh, viewer's question. Uh, Thomas SCT says, What's your favorite flip combo? Not a bad question. My favorite flip combo? Either mm -hmm. has to be a backflip inward or just a straight cash roll. I mean, a lot of guys know that I've been I've yeah. known for my cash rolls. It's just one of the coolest feeling tricks. And um, I would say I'm doing pretty well, too. But yeah, it has <laughs> to be either a backflip inward or a cash roll. No, I think it's a solid, uh, solid trick right there. Well, a couple of solid tricks, actually. I, I think uh, Stanley flips are so popular nowadays as well. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually don't Stanley. do Stanley flips as much. Yeah. I feel like. I feel like the Stanley flips are very, very popular. I've just, I've never wrapped my head around to doing one. I've just always done the back flip inwards. It's a little yeah. bit different, but they look kind of, uh, kind of similar. A um, couple of people have asked, who's your favorite rider and why? Sorry, I can't point out who's asked that, but loads of people have asked that. Who's your favorite rider and why? My favorite rider, well, growing up, I had tons of favorite riders. Um, Joe Armstrong was probably my biggest favorite rider growing up because he actually taught me a lot of stuff I know riding a scooter. Nice, but nice. To, 
today, my favorite rider, well, besides myself, obviously. Oh, you said it. You said it. <laughs> besides myself, my favorite rider would have to be, I would say Dylan Morrison. I oh, love the way Dylan sure, rides. Sure. I, think, I think his style and everything he does is just phenomenal. And the fact that he goes like, for the hype, yeah. No, I'm a massive Dylan Morrison fan as well myself, and I mean, guy has like consistently, consistently been on the podium for year on year on year, and oh, uh, yeah. even now, like he, he, it seems like he, the older he gets, the stronger and better he gets as well. And I would say he's probably definitely a, uh, a good contender for oh, yeah. you uh, yeah. to become a world champion. On that note. Do you think you'll become next ISA world champion? Well, that's definitely, two years that's, row? Definitely, that's definitely the plan. I mean, I've been practicing out here, trying to get my strength up, trying to get my riding capabilities better than ever. So I'm going to go into this contest this year looking like a different rider. I've been working on new tricks. A lot of a lot of my fans have been saying that they haven't been seeing me post as much on social media and everything like that. And yeah. it's not that I'm not like practicing or anything like that. I've just been trying to save my my tricks and like not show yeah. as many people. So when I go yeah. into the world this year, I'll be a different rider and no one will know what to expect. How like how often do you ride? Like a week or a month? You know, like how often do you ride? Well, now the the winter months are just ending here in Jersey. So mm -hmm. we've got decent weather right now. It rains a lot, but when it doesn't rain, I would say I ride about three to four no, probably like four to five days a week. Yeah. I mean, I remember actually when I was your age, I was probably riding that much as well. In all fairness, you have to, don't you? You have to just stay yeah. on top of it. Yeah. And I mean, it's harder now. It's a lot harder now, like than it was when I was when I was like in my prime. Like just yeah, like nowadays, it, it just seems that there's so many kids who are just insane, and you've like never even heard of them one week, and then next week they're just right up there and. And like nipping at your heels, so to speak. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, you you seem to do a good job of uh, keeping it up and staying a, staying ahead of the game. But I, I take my hat off to you because it, it's not going to be easy nowadays, and that's Definitely. for sure. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, the sport is progressing insanely fast. It's it's unbelievable what these people are doing nowadays. I'll I'll see on Instagram some kid doing triple triple scooter flips. What's his yeah. name? Oh. I would I would say Colby, right? Is Colby, it Colby? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was thinking the exact Colby. same when I was just saying that. Yeah, like I was thinking of him because like it seemed I know he's probably been around, but it seems to me and I think to a lot of people, that he just came out of nowhere yeah. and like suddenly he's like doing triple wall scoop flip combo, like overhead combos and that. Respect yeah. to that guy. I mean, I know that's that's not gonna probably be a competition trick, but that trick, I can't even imagine that. Respect to him. Well, I, I, I don't know if you caught the Ryan Williams interview that we did last week, but we were talking about the whole, like, competition style and then just, like, big tricks, world first style. And they're quite different. Uh, and, I mean, if you can if you can bring world's first and massive tricks to competition, then that's how you're going to get on the podium, isn't it? Definitely. Right, Definitely. So, um, We've got some more viewer questions, by the way, guys. Just keep asking them in the comment section. I'll do my best to point out all the good ones and uh, and fire them over to John Marco. And on that note, people are asking me questions as well. This isn't about me, all right? We've got John Marco Gados, ISA world champion here. I'm going to definitely, definitely be asking him. Asaya Sam's asking for a headstand. That's definitely a Terry Price thing right there. Um, <laughs> Uh, Bill Grice. Bill Grice says, well, what made you get into scooter riding? That's a nice, simple one. What made me get into scootering? Um, yeah. Well, so my neighbor in my old town, I used to, I moved to this house about two years ago. Mm -hmm. But in my old house, it was in Brick, if any of the fans are watching from Jersey. What? It was in Brick Township <laughs> in New Jersey. And my neighbor, Dominic Riccio, he... He used to ride a scooter. It wasn't really anything serious. Like he was just doing like bunny hops and like one eighties and little stuff like that. And I never really rode scooters, but I rode bikes and skateboards at the skate park. And yeah. scootering never like caught my attention that much. I guess just I wasn't into it like that. And then the day I hopped on a scooter, I never got off. I'm like I just I was hooked the day I got on. And it was it started to turn into like a competition between me and my friend Dom that got me into it. And 
yes. us just going back to back, competing against each other, it just made me lead to what I am now. So I actually had a, a very similar situation. Um, obviously, when I started riding, it was when scooters were invented. But but I rode um, I rode inline BMX beforehand. Did you show you what skateboard and BMX was it? Yeah. yeah, I rode inline and BMX, and it was my friend Mitch and I used used to ride and just doing like bunny hops and like jumping jumping up curbs and that. But we'd compete against each other. And I think that what that highlights there is like competition is good for progression. Oh, definitely. definitely. So you know, now the competition is just one of the best things for progression. And nowadays, I think thanks to the ISA World Championship and whatnot we're just seeing this level that is just getting like completely out of hand and i mean all the sports must look at us now and just go like how do you guys even do that you know and i think it's fantastic i think it's absolutely amazing to to watch it go from 20 years ago when the sport was first invented to where it is now and where it's going to be in 10 years time or 20 years time is just yeah mind blowing absolutely mind -blowing. even even the year by year progression of the sport is just insane like the yeah. tricks that were done did last year compared to the tricks that are being done this year, are just yeah. Oh, Asaya Sam says, uh, what was your dream park to go to as a kid? Um, either Ramp Works, because I saw tons of videos at Ramp Works. Yeah. Which I've been to both skate parks now, and both of them are absolutely amazing. Definitely the best skate parks I've ever been to, hands down. But those two skate parks were definitely the skate parks I look forward to going to when I was a kid. I think, um, I think a lot of people are quite surprised with how cold ramp work usually is because it's obviously yeah. really warm. Yeah. Really cold, people get there and they're like, oh, it's great, but like, <laughs> I'm absolutely really like a jacket and gloves and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, oh, Jordan Clark in the house. What up, Jordan Clark? Um, Jordan Clark, what up, boy? Uh, we've got Matt is Reichenbusch. Oh, that does not sound English. But I'm going to guess German, maybe. How much did your skate park cost? So, Any idea? Yeah, I think I have a good idea. So well, another really good question as well. I'm going to save that one. I remember. Carry on. <laughs> the whole the whole skate park probably cost about a hundred thousand dollars around there in wood, but some of the parts of the skate park. We didn't, I didn't pay for myself. Like I got a good hookup with like the airbag and I got a good hookup with oh. some of the skate light and stuff like that. But awesome. all of it together is probably around a good hundred thousand dollars. That's just absolutely mind blowing. Like that, like the commitment to put a hundred thousand dollars into that sport is just, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, obviously you've got very supportive parents as well. Not oh, yeah. only to like let you have a skate park in the back garden, but I'm sure they've helped you out a lot with that as well. Definitely, yeah. definitely. It, that my skate park back there wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for my mom and dad. Uh, I can't yeah. thank them enough for supporting me and just being the best parents and always being there for me. They they definitely have they definitely have made me the world champion that I am today, no doubt. I don't mean and I can't think of like any better parents either. Like honestly, them guys like yeah. your your dad, for example, is just the man. Like every time I see him, he's yeah. got the biggest smile on his face. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know him as well, he's like stacked. He's like me in a brick as well. And uh, but he's actually like the kindest character I've ever met. Like he's just so nice. Oh, and yeah. uh, and he supports you and the sport. And uh, yeah, he I cares personally, about the sport. I really important to everybody. It. He yeah, so yeah, no, I personally appreciate his uh, input so much. Yeah, but, um, anyway, I saw a really good question, and it was from Ellie Official, and it said, Do you have any secret hobbies, stuff that people might not know about? Because obviously, people know about your scooter riding, they know about your gym. Are there any other things that interest you a lot? Honestly, besides working out in the gym and riding my scooter, I have one little other hobby that I've been getting into just because it's quarantine and I can't do much. I've been playing a lot of video games and I know uh, that's, yeah. not, that's not something I normally would do. And I, I'm not really that type okay. to play video games, but yeah. lately with nothing to do, I've just, I've been doing that a ton. I mean, that's understandable, especially given the uh, current circumstances. I mean, I personally yeah. don't play them at all, but like, I can totally understand how kids get hooked on it. And it's, it's definitely a good, uh, way to pass the time isn't it for sure yeah yeah all right well um 
guys, keep coming in with the questions. By the way, I've, I've seen some amazing questions already. Keep flooding the uh, comment section with the questions. But I just want to talk about um, Action Space. Obviously, you are you're sponsored by Action Space. You're sponsored by. Uh, do you want to give a shout out to all your sponsors? By the way, go on. Who are you? Yeah, uh, who are you sponsored by? To Action Space, Lucky Scooters, S One, and the Shop Pro Scooter Lab. Best sponsors. Nice. And obviously, I want to talk about Action Space. At, on the night, actually, big shout out to Lucky who have just come on board as an ISA member as well. Big shout out to Lucky. It was a long time coming and stoked for that. But Action Space is obviously the title sponsor for the ISA, and that's why I want to talk about Action Space. And um, what is your what was your opinion of Action Space when they first came into the sport? Because I think I, I don't know about you, but I was quite like, who are these people? And, yeah, know. definitely. When they first came along, I was a little confused. I wasn't sure what they were trying to go for or what they were doing because they didn't sell scooter parts and sell any products like that. And I was, I think everybody was lost, but I totally support them. Once I found out that they were just trying to make scootering better and bigger and they were just trying to push the sport as much as possible, I was definitely along with them and I was happy to sign with them. Yeah. Well, I think that was, um, I think for a lot of people, the Action Space Invitational was quite the eye opener as well, wasn't yeah. it? Uh, I definitely, mean, I was, I was there. You were there. Contest, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I like my appreciation for action space. Like, it was already at a high level, but it went right up after that because it showed that they're willing to uh, to put their money where their mouth is. You know, they're not just all talk, and you know, they are yeah, fully yeah. in definitely. the sport and, and see it grow. And uh, and obviously. Now we've signed a three-year deal with them for the ISA World Final. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about you, but big things coming. Big things coming. Oh, yeah. Are you excited about that, that, that partnership? Definitely, definitely. Um, like I said before, I am, I think, the only rider on Action Space for scootering. I know they have a lot of other sponsored people for like other sports and everything because they don't just represent scootering. But this year's Worlds are going to be definitely a year to remember, especially because Action Space has joined along with ISA. And I think it's definitely yeah. going to put contests this year. We're going to get a lot more people, I think, in the vendors. And I think a lot of people are just going to see it overall. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think it's all about getting just more people into the sport and just building that sport up. And I think Action Space is a perfect uh, company to work. Right, guys, we've had uh, quite a few good comments coming in. Keep them coming, by the way, guys. I will do my best to go through as many as I can. Uh, Jack Scoots 04 says, do you believe you're the best? That's a, that's a very personal question, that. Eh? Hmm. Do you believe you're the best? Um, do I believe I'm the best? I, I honestly think uh, there really can't be a best because there's obviously – there's tons of people that are way better than other people at certain things. Like I know I'm not nearly the best street rider and I know there's yep. people that could probably film a way better web edit than me and everything like that. So I think everybody mm -hmm. has their, their own thing that they're good at in scootering. And yep. I could say maybe I could say like I'm the best competition rider, but there's other people that are the best in their own way, you know? I think my opinion on that is like saying, are you the best? is just too vague of a question, isn't it? It's just yeah, way, way, I, I, way I feel like I can't it. answer that. I can't. But I would say to win the ISA World Final, to win the ISA World Championships, it, it's not just one competition. You yeah, know, no, it's, definitely. There's definitely. so much before that. Yeah. Uh, to get all the way there and then get first place, then win and become ISA world champion is just a thing in itself. It's like a whole new category in itself, I think. And I yeah. think it's for itself as well. I think on that note, actually, what is it that you think makes the ISA world final so prestigious? You know, because everyone respects the ISA world champion. They, they respect the ISA world final. There's like, there's no doubt that it's like the biggest and most prestigious competition series in, in ski riding. What is it that you think makes it that? Well, I definitely think the build-up of contests before the World Championships, like all the qualifiers mm -hmm. and then the, um, uh, the uh, national qualifiers, I think yep. all that builds up to like create the hype for the World Finals. Mm -hmm. And definitely on the World Finals Day, it does come down to like how your day is going. Like, if you have a bad day, 
it, it could happen to anybody, you know? You could be the best yeah. rider in the world and have a horrible day, and that just happens. But I definitely think the hype of all the contests before that and, like, your placings in all the contests before that definitely bring up, you know what I'm saying? Like, it builds up. It builds up into this 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 yeah. pedestal, doesn't it? Yeah, and I, yeah. I'd agree. It's it's, it's yeah. not just about the one event. It's about it, all of the events oh, the, yeah. in the whole world championship that makes that that world final sit on a pedestal. And yeah, I think, yeah. I think that's what we're going with that. Yeah, and Lovely. definitely keep... the the crowd watching just sets it aside from any other contest. It's just crazy. Like back when it was at. When it was in Barcelona, it was crazy because of all the yeah. people spectating and watching it. It was, it was awesome. Great. Um, on that note, someone else said, "What other trophies do you have?" Because I know that you've won, you've won another huge, huge competition series that maybe a lot of people don't know. So, do you want to go through some of your the biggest yeah, accolades, your achievements? Definitely, I am. I am two times Pro Scooter Series champion, which is. Definitely a big achievement for me. Probably, sure. it, well, definitely not the best day of my life. Winning Worlds was the best day of my life, but second <laughs> best day of my life for sure. Those nice. two contests were just unbelievable, and especially in Australia, which is like my dream place I ever wanted to go. So it's just great yeah. vibe out there. Um, I de- I um won the the um what's it called? What's it called? Uh, where they did Action Space this year? Where they did the contest this year? The, no. uh, the uh, Corby, oh, Scoop Fest? Yeah, the Corby, yeah. but like as a team, when they were as a team. Yeah, was it at the Action Space? No, it wasn't the Action Space Invitational, it was at Scoop Fest where they did. I'm trying to think myself what it was. Oh, the, uh, yeah, the, the, at Scoop Fest, right? Scoop Fest. Yeah. Oh, yeah, at Scoop Fest, they do, uh, they do the, the teams that, that win. Mm-hmm. That win their own categories as well. Yeah, those times yeah. were definitely sick. Just working as a team and just finding the balance in all of your riding to come out with the win on top is just so cool. Um, it threw me off a little bit because uh, obviously Scoopfest this year was actually at Rush Skate Park. It switched yeah, from yeah. Corby or last year. Sorry, uh, the last Scoopfest was at Rush. Yeah, yeah. But um, keep the comments coming, guys. Keep flooding the comment section. I'm really liking the uh, comments. Um, I've got a. A nice, simple, generic question for you. Um, what, is your, what is your plan when this whole COVID-19 situation is over? We're out of lockdown. Where's the, where's the first place you want to go? What's the first, first thing you want to do? Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to go to a food store without a mask on. That's what I want to do. <laughs> that's, just, that's just so unreal to me that what the world is coming to, where you have to go to, where you have to walk into a store with a mask and gloves on, just doesn't seem real but yeah. after this whole COVID-19 thing I'm just gonna I'm gonna strive to become a better athlete I'm gonna push myself harder than I've ever pushed myself before and I'm gonna make this year a year to remember no I think and I think you're you're a great example of someone who's just a, an all-round great athlete as well because you know obviously to be at that level you have to be a solid athlete but I mean you you spend near enough as much time in the gym as you do in the skate park, right? Like yeah, every day, every day, two times a day training in the gym, and then one riding session every day. And how how does that help your riding? How do you think that helps you? As I think a rider? definitely, I think it definitely helps a lot. The strength mm-hmm. that from like weightlifting definitely helps yeah. me throwing around my scooter, like whipping it faster and everything like that. And then yeah. usually when I wake up in the morning, I work on like stamina work. So like build mm-hmm. my stamina up, like cardio. And I think Not that's really. what that comes to with a big play in contest riding. Like if you could do a minute run contest, then yeah. your stamina should be pretty good. I mean, a minute run, it might not seem too complicated, but doing as hard as tricks as you can, doing one minute and not stopping, it's pretty yeah. good stamina. But yeah. No, for sure. No, I think mean, that's uh yeah, that's a no brainer for sure. The more stamina you have, the the better chance you're gonna have. Of, uh, yeah. catching the judges' eyes and, and being able to not flop at the last minute because a lot of people they get to 30, 40 seconds into their run, and what happens is they slow down uh-huh. and they start going to their basic tricks, you know, bar spin towers. And that's what I think the last 20 seconds of a run is what I think really separates the, the boys from the men or the girls from the women, you know. <laughs> 
I think, uh, yeah, it takes a lot to do that. Um, Phil says, have you have you always been into the sport? So, I, I mean, you, you semi-answered that question already in a, in, a, in a way, but have you always known about the sport? Um, yeah, I've definitely always known about it. When I was younger, I started riding a scooter when I was like 10, 11 range, in that, in that range. And uh, as soon as, when I started riding a skateboard and a bike and everything like that, I obviously saw people at the skate park riding scooters, but it just wasn't, wasn't as big as it is today, you know? Like the scene wasn't, the scene wasn't where you would go to the skate park and see like a thousand scooter riders, where today if you went to the yeah. skate park, you would see a majority scooter riders, you know? So. For sure, for sure. Um, Hang Five just asked a good one. He said, uh, ask him about his world champion hoodie. I'm guessing you know what they're on about right there, Hang Five Games. world champion hood, of the action space one, or? Ask him about his world champ hoodie. That was what he said? Well, I'll say the world champ hoodie that's available on my website, Shop JMG. Make sure to go check it out. It's oh, really, okay, you got your own one, nice. Yeah, fits great. Um, definitely good fabric, everything like that. So make sure to go buy one of those. But my um action space world champ hoodie is very sick too. Got gold lettering on the back. It's dope. It's oh, great. Hang Five says no. The hoodie at Chino. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, the Hang Five gear hoodie that they gave me. Oh, of course, of sleep, course. Rob. I've been wearing it to sleep. <laughs> nice okay so obviously you're now amongst one of the greats of the sport you know you're an isa world champion you you've got pro scooter series under your belt you've got lots of accolades um who are the greats in your eyes and, and why like who are like the top riders or, i would say the greats of the sport you know because you're You've cemented yourself in as one of the greats oh, of the sport. Okay, I got you. No one will forget. Yeah, you you cemented in the history book, so to speak. Who is it? Who are the greats in your eyes? Who, who are the ones that stands out as the greats in your eyes? I think Dylan Morrison is definitely a great because he's always on the top. He's been riding for forever, and he always is pushing the boundaries, going higher than anybody. He just yeah. he sends it always. Um, Ryan Williams. No brainer. Everybody brain knows Ryan Williams. He is just. Yeah. He's insane. <laughs> he's, no he's, he's insane. He's also so nice as well, isn't he? Oh, he's so a great humble. guy. He's a great guy. Yeah. Um, All right, two. I want five. I want five. five. Jordan Clark, because he came nice. to scootering. He, I swear, Jordan Clark came into scootering. No one really knew him until the World Finals. I mean, at least I didn't know him until the World Finals that one year. Yeah. I'm not sure. What, he, I had, think um, he, was he had eight five. Years? He had five thousand followers when he won when he first won the ISA yeah. World Final. And, uh, Coming up like that takes takes a lot. I have no idea how many he's got now, but it's, it's around like the half a million mark or something crazy, isn't it? Like <laughs> he's got so many now, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Definitely, right, that's definitely. uh that's three. Is that three? Um, yeah, that's Dakota three. Schutz. Dakota Schutz, Money. because I've looked yeah. up to Dakota since I was a little kid. I've always watched his stuff and he, he definitely motivated me to ride a scooter that's awesome i mean and he's obviously a massive part of action space nowadays which is great and he's uh first ever isa world champion three-time isa world champion i mean if that didn't make the list then i don't know what would there you go round four and then i would have to say the last one would be you terry i mean i grew up watching your stuff too i you were definitely a big motivation. I mean, if I'm up there with M5, that's just insane. But but thank you. I appreciate it. Wow. Of course. Yeah, I mean, solid list. Uh, solid list. I mean, I, I think nowadays what I'm doing with the ISA is uh, is probably what puts me on the map nowadays. Uh, I just want to see, I just want to personally make the the sport as, as amazing and as huge as physically possible. And yes. I think it helps when we've got riders like you that are, you know, great influences on the kids. And, you know, you're, you're a great role model. And on that note, actually, what advice would you give to an up-and-coming new rider to, to make it, you know, uh, to become the next world champion? What, would, what advice would you give to them personally? I would say that don't let anybody put you down. If someone at the skate park is telling you, you can't do this trick, you can't do that, you're never going to be as good as that person, don't listen to them. You ride at your own pace. You do your own tricks. You're you. And just keep progressing. Keep pushing it. 
and just have fun with it. Perfect. Perfect. Right, we've got uh, we've got quite a few questions coming in. Keep them questions coming. I've seen quite a few people talking about Cody Flom. I mean, uh, someone said, "I thought, oh, I thought you were going to say Cody Flom." I mean, Cody Flom is an absolute legend. Cody Flom is yeah. boy. He's one of my Cody Flom has been one of my good friends for so long. Yeah. Me and Cody have gone on tours together. Cody's come to my house and stayed at my house and gone to Woodward with me. We've just had so many great times together. I love Cody. He's a boy. Someone also asked, uh, when are you planning to ride with Cody next? Obviously, that's a bit of a, of a hard question, isn't it, because of the yeah. current situation. But do you know, are you still in contact with him? Are you planning to meet up with definitely, him? Definitely after this whole quarantine, COVID-19 stuff is over. Me and Cody got to meet up. We got to film some videos. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll come to my house and we'll get like a Woodward week in or something like mm-hmm. that. But definitely after this quarantine, we'll do something. Um, obviously, Cody is uh, not only a great friend, but he's like a, a personal rival as well, I guess. You know, for bias, a world, uh, world champion for sure. He's always uh, right up there. Uh, someone else who is definitely up there, and I see a lot of rivalry between you two, is uh, Chris Barris. Yes. What, uh, what's, the, what's the situation with Chris? You know, are you, are you good friends? Are you just playing up for the... Uh, I mean, oh, what? I would say me and Chris definitely have our differences. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not too close with him because I, I just really don't know him that well. You know, okay. he, he definitely is like my top competition being like number two. So yeah. it's definitely it's definitely hard to like create a really good friendship with somebody, especially when you're like your top rival. But yeah. I think he's definitely a great guy. Um I obviously like I know Chris and like I've hung out with him before but I would say we haven't gotten to the friendship that I would like to have with him you know because of what we do and everything that like we have to go through together it's just hard you know but he's a great guy don't let don't let anybody think that he's not a great guy he's a great guy and he is definitely a true true pushing in this sport. I, I kind of almost see it as like um, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel yeah. Messi. You know, like, yeah, yeah. like they have so much respect for each other, but they also are like massive rivals. So yeah. like they're all competing against each other in like well, in everything, isn't it? And uh, I think for for you two, not only is Chris like a massive rival on the world stage, you're also two of the the biggest and best US riders as well. So even on your own home turf. So it's, I, I think it's easy to for uh, Dylan Morrison to sit there over in Australia and be a rival and it's not yeah, definitely, so close to home. Yeah. yeah. Um, someone asked, nice generic question, do you still have a girlfriend? I do. I am dating this girl named Gianna Lombardo and she is a great girl. Um, yeah. I love her, to be honest with you. She's Amazing. Just, She's just overall supportive, amazing. She's always there for me. And I couldn't ask for a better girl to be be by my side. And on the note of girls, um, Dean Rose asked, who's your favorite female scooter rider? Um, My favorite female scooter rider would have to be my girl, Kiara Mead. I grew up riding with Kiara since the beginning. Kiara was probably, I think Kiara was one of the first people I ever met at the skate park actually really she wow was, she was always there she taught me so much stuff she's taught me actually how to go up a ramp like just go up a ramp yeah so phil, yeah, phil Sierra's, asked did she teach awesome. did she teach you how to tower who asked that kiera um, yeah. yeah yeah i don't know how he's asked that i don't know oh, no. kiera, kiera didn't teach me how to tail whip um my that kid dom that i was telling you about before my neighbor yeah, that yeah. got me into scooter and everything like that, he taught me how to tear up and like bar spinning like that. Nice. Nice. And obviously it's uh, it's revolutionary for you because you, not only um, did you win the ISA World Championship, but you won it alongside uh, Rebecca Ortiz, to, oh, yeah. to the first male-female duo. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what's your opinion on Becca? Do you know her well and have you... Has this brought you together, uh, uh, you know, as a friendship blossomed from them? What's your opinion? I definitely, I definitely would like to know Becca more than I do. 
I don't know her too well. Um, I've not gotten too many chances to actually get down and like sit and talk with her. But yeah. from what I've seen, she is an amazing scooter rider. She's definitely pushing the limits. And she is just a great girl. She's always got a smile on her face. I see that every time I see her. And she's super nice. Her mom and her family super cool and everything like that. So I definitely respect Becca. And I think she's doing the right thing. She is definitely on the top of Scooter right now. She's killing yeah. it. Definitely. Uh, do, you we should, do you think we should maybe interview Becca next? Definitely. Yeah, she's the, yeah. She's the female 100%. world champ. I would like to film a video with Becca as like yep. the world champ and the female world champ and like put them together it'd be so cool. i mean it makes sense doesn't it like you, you guys are the first male and female world yeah. champion you've got to capitalize on that for sure Definitely. yeah i think um yeah i think we'll probably try and get becca on next i think that'd be a no-brainer we've just had our male world champion on we we definitely gotta try and get the female world champion I'll, I'll do my best to make that happen but uh what is what is your opinion on the whole female world championship and the, the direction we've gone with it like do you think there's more we should be doing should we be looking at doing qualifiers for the females or is there any way we can maybe build up the, the female side of things i definitely think what you guys have done with the female scootering sport i think it's been great i do like how there is a separate contest for the females than the guys because obviously yeah. females have a little disadvantage they're not as strong as a guy would be Mm -hmm. But I think it's good that they're separated into their own class. I don't think there's enough girl scooter riders to make a whole separate, like, qualifier for them. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. I mean, if the scooter keeps – the scootering sport keeps rising and more more girl scooter riders keep coming into the sport, I definitely think that that would be a great idea. But I like, I I like what you guys are doing, how you guys are separating them. Definitely. I think, yeah, I think it's a it's – a it's an obvious thing to do because obviously you look at the Olympics, you look at football, you look at any other sport, in fact, and uh, it is separated. And I think, um, I think you know, girls are amazing in their own right as well. And I don't think we should. We I think we should be appreciating the female side of the sport in its, in its own way. And I think by giving them their own world championship and having their own world champion. Definitely, definitely the right way to do it. And I, I think it's crazy. I think think back a few years ago, and we had we had the girls competing against the guys. And yeah. I mean, they're just, yeah, there's just so many guys in the sport as well. So it's yeah. like they're never going to get a look in like that. And yeah. I think it, this gives them the um, gives them the the focus that they deserve. And I think yeah, if we can do more to help them, then um, I definitely I definitely think that. Like, say, like, a girl like Becca, she could motivate another girl to start scootering or come into the sport more than I can because they have the connection of, like, being a girl together, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I yep. think that definitely comes into, like, a big part with, like, definitely bringing more people into the sport, especially more girls. So, like, separating the girls into their own class will definitely draw more attention for more girls to come into the sport, you know? Yeah. For me, I mean, my my personal ambition would be to get just as many girls as we have guys in the sport. And I, and yeah. I personally don't I don't see any reason why we couldn't have that. You know, I don't see any reason why scoot riding couldn't be a 50-50 female male sport. I think it's a, an amazing Definitely sport. Can. Definitely can. Yeah. All right, we've got uh, we've got loads of questions coming in. Loving it, guys. Keep them coming. All right, and I will do my best to uh, to get them all across to John Marco. If I don't read them out straight away, just keep just keep repeating them, and I'm sure I'll see them. Uh, but let's uh, let's flick for a few of them. Phil says 100 percent the girls' side of the sport will yeah. grow. I totally agree. We need we need it to happen. Um, what's your oh, who's that? What's your thought on Nils? Nils, I don't even know Nils. Do you know Nils? Oh, I know Nils. I know Nils. You know Nils? Go on. Yeah, he's like he's a writer from like over here where I live. He's really good. He's okay. definitely on the come up. He placed. Yeah. I'm not sure what place he got at the um the Woodward East qualifier, but he had a killer run. I saw he tried to he tried to finish his run off with a cash roll over the box, and he got so so close. He just slipped out, but he's definitely on the come up. He's a great rider. Definitely keep an eye out for that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jack Scoot says, are you going to send a flip flat on wood again? Oh, yeah. Just wait for it, guys. Maybe I've done it already. Maybe I haven't. But the clip will the clip will come soon. Nice. All right. So that's what I'm working on in lockdown, I guess. 
Um, Alex Skinner says, how did you progress so fast? Because, I mean, you definitely progressed very fast. I think it. I think definitely it just comes into play how much you're riding and how much you're trying. Um, I used to go to the skate park when I was a little kid from, no joke, like 10 in the morning to 10 at night. And there was like two sessions. It would, the session would end at 4. I would just go get food, food at, at 4 o'clock and then just ride the rest of the whole day. So I think <laughs> definitely... If you're riding all day long, every single day, you're going to progress like like crazy. Yeah, that's a, I mean, it seems like a simple, but uh, simple option, but I guess it's just that, that determination and, you know, to stick, yeah. that commitment to, to stick to riding that much. And I think, I think if you're enjoying it, then it kind of comes in hand, right? Just comes mm-hmm. in hand, in hand, the progression. Um, Ellie Official, she's she had loads of good questions actually. Do you have any pets? I do. I have two dogs. I have one Yorkie and one other dog. She's a mix between a Bajan and I'm not sure what the other one is. I'm not sure what she's mixed between. But the one her name is Gucci actually. Gucci. Gucci. Yeah. My whole <laughs> I'm really into Gucci. My mom, my dad, my yeah. sister were all really into Gucci. And we just we named her Gucci, but the other dog. That's, uh, that's an expensive thing to be into, that's for sure. But uh, I mean, if, if it works for you, that's that's sweet. I love my Gucci. Yeah. All right, uh, Matt. Oh, with this guy again it says uh, Mattis says, "What was your family's reaction when you became world champion?" Uh, well, my mom. And my mom, my sister, and the rest of my family were at home watching, and I'm pretty sure they were all crying on live stream. But me and my dad, my dad, I as soon as I as soon as it happened, the first person I looked at was my dad, and I couldn't keep myself together. I, some tears fell from my eyes, and me and my dad were literally jumping in excitement. We were so happy that all of my hard work and dedication has finally paid off, and I'm excited to keep pushing. We were happy though. It was it was definitely the greatest day of my life, for sure. Um, injuries. Obviously, you've you've had a few injuries over over the time. A um, couple of questions, really. What has been your worst injury, and do you still have any niggly injuries that affect you to this day? Um, I would say my worst injury was it was when I was younger, and I was. Uh, the skate park, there was like nobody at the skate park. Uh, the Incline Club, you know the Incline Club skate park? Yeah, of course, yeah. Yep. There was like nobody at the skate park, and it was me and my friend Keith, and we were just playing a game of scoot. And at the at Incline, there was there was two seven-foot quarter pipes that were like back-to-back, like next to each other. And then mm-hmm. in the middle, there was a quarter pipe that was like connected to the two seven-foots, but it sticked out a little bit, and it was like mm-hmm. a five-foot, and it was just... It was just in between the seven foots, but it just popped out a little. And yeah. I was playing scoot against my friend Keith, and I was going full speed, like as fast as I could do, to go up that like middle one. And yeah. since it sticked out a little bit, I wasn't paying attention like I should have been. And yeah. I hit the side of the quarter that oh, stuck out no. and went right over my bars, and my face went full force right into the coping. And I was Breaking just nice. out. I didn't. I don't know. If You're I, broke my nose. I, could, I could actually crack my nose, so I don't know if I actually broke it. I could, like, it sounds actually, like it might be a little broken. <laughs> it probably broke, but I definitely messed myself up there. I was. I woke up in the. Um. Uh, I woke up in the ambulance, and I have. I took off of school for so long, and I was in the hospital for a good amount of time. And they they thought I broke my neck. That was the problem. They thought I like actually broke my neck and like did some damage to my head. But they told me if I wasn't wearing a certified helmet, I, it wouldn't have been good. It wouldn't have been good at all. I mean, I I am a massive, mass, massive advocator of uh, wearing yes. certified helmets. And even just a helmet in general, like, it's crazy that I, you still have to tell people to like wear that. helmets for this day. And I mean, like, I, I, I don't know about you, but I can't stress it enough. Like, your, your head, it's not like a bone. It won't just fix itself if, if you just mess it up. This is the biggest muscle. You gotta fix it. You gotta fix it. Yeah. Well, uh, what would you personally say to scoot riders? So I'm sure we've got we've got a ton of scoot riders in here right now. And I'm sure we've got some who don't wear helmets when they ride. So what are you going to say to them riders right now? 
you riders that are riding without a helmet and pads, you got to change that. It is a very bad idea. I know from experience, I've hit my head without a helmet on, and it is terrible, and it's a lot better with a helmet on, trust me. And you guys should wear all your pads, honestly, your knee pads. Um, I don't wear elbow pads because I just feel like they're, they like mess up my range of motion with my arms. But I definitely think knee pads come into a big play with saving your knees. Like guys like John yeah. Reyes, he wrecked his knee really, really badly. Just doing a backflip over a hip, anything could hurt you so badly. So I definitely think pads are definitely. Do you wear, um, do you wear ankle braces? Yeah, I wear ankle braces. Yeah. I started wearing yeah. ankle braces a long, long time ago. And I, yeah. I broke my ankle wearing an ankle brace. It still snapped with yeah. my ankle brace. But I still ride with my ankle braces to this day because I don't, I don't want I mean, any Obviously, an ankle brace isn't going to stop a broken ankle. But I feel like it, it, it will turn a sprain into just like a twist. Definitely. Or definitely. A twisted ankle into just a, a sore ankle. And I think it just, I, I just don't think like the human body is just not strong enough, is it? To like just no. go out. Like, it's and, definitely not. You know, you can't trust the human body to just bounce every time. You might get lucky, but I can tell you, it's going to get you. It's going to get you. You're going to get injured. And I just hope for anyone watching, you know, it's not a bad injury. And I mean, head injuries are serious. So we're, we're a certified helmet. You said you're sponsored by S1, right? Do they, yep. do, do, they do certified helmets? Yeah. Yeah. S1 makes... Amazing certified helmets. They also make knee pads, which I ride, and they are amazing knee pads. I don't have any problems with my knees because I, I ride with my knee pads every time. And yeah. the helmets are super comfortable, super soft, and they don't make your head look so big when it's a certified helmet. They're pretty good. So for anyone who's a little self-conscious about wearing dodgy helmets or ones that look too big. Oh, we've got John Reyes in the house, by the way. Uh, there you go. S1 helmets. Personally recommended by John Marco Gables right now. Love it. Yeah. Um, going back to the Incline Club, obviously you mentioned the Incline Club. Um, I, I don't know if you know, I've been to the Incline Club. There was a scooter competition there back in 2006. Mm. I know that was a long time ago. <laughs> but um, I met um, Scotty Cranmer there and he actually came up oh, to yeah. me and, and he said, oh, are you Terry Price? And come up to me. I was like, oh, it's so nice to meet you, man. And I mean, like, it's just an absolute living legend. And what yeah. he's done now coming back comes back to injuries, you know. Scotty Kramer, for anyone who doesn't know, is, uh, is a BMX rider. He was uh, paralysed from from a crash. Uh, he was wearing a helmet, fortunately, and they've managed to recover it. And now he's, he's back to riding to a degree. Yeah. And um, but he's been fighting it. But I think that's a that's a really good, um, it's a really good example of how you've got to protect yourself. Definitely sure. with the helmets. Definitely. Yeah. He, he was wearing a helmet, and that still happened. Yeah. To him. All he did was he he was filming a clip for a video. And after he landed the trick, he didn't even mess up on the the clip he was filming. He landed the clip, and after he was jumping over a bush, and on the other side of the bush was a little pothole. And his wheel just got caught in the pothole, and he wrecked himself with the helmet on. So that just proves to you guys that how important a helmet must be. Yeah, and I think uh, like the, like your worst crash, you said like it just caught you off guard, you know, because I think you can brace when you know you're crashing, you can kind of brace yourself. Yeah, but yeah. it's when you get caught off guard, like hitting the side of the ramp, like not realizing you're gonna hit hitting a drain or something like that. That's when you'll really get hurt. I think for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Random J666 says, Terry Price, you legend. I'm guessing he's one of your friends. But, but he asked... Uh, what was his name? Brandon. Random J666. Well, hello, Brandon. Good seeing that. Any questions for John whilst he's here? Um, Phil Phil asked... Um, oh, what was it that Phil, Phil just asked? He, he asked a good question just then. Um, do you get recognised a lot? That's a good question, I think. Do you get recognised? Yeah, I, I go to... well. Not now because we're in quarantine. Yeah. Uh, I think normal. Um, I'll be going to like the mall and stuff like that, and I'll see like people that want to take pictures of me and like sign stuff. And obviously, when I go to the skate parks, it's a lot more, a lot more intense with how many people know me. But I would say outside of the skate parks, it's pretty good. I've I've seen people at the malls out in public just walking around and 
yeah, I would say I get recognized a good amount. What was my, what's, is there like a standout moment for you? Was there like a moment where you just got recognized and you're just like, what, like this is crazy, like um, made you realize you're like a bit of a celebrity or? Yeah. Oh yeah, when I was, I was actually, I was flying to a contest somewhere and I was in the <laughs> airport in some other country that I, I've never even been in before. And yeah. this kid with his family come up to me and my dad and were so so amazed like they couldn't even like talk properly that like, really? i was there and they were like seeing me and it was just it was just an unreal feeling like that i have that much i have that much motivation and like inspiration on somebody that i could make them feel that way about me and it's just yeah. it, I'm, I'm honestly so thankful that i could i can make somebody feel like that and i could yeah. motivate people like that it's just amazing no i i 100 agree yeah i mean like myself i've had surreal experiences like that yeah. but uh, one that i really want to know is has becoming world champion opened doors for you has, has it changed that Definitely. at all yeah Definitely. yeah I've, 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 talked, I've, talked to, I've talked to a number of companies about pushing scootering to higher limits than what they are right now and mm -hmm. I definitely think that me becoming the world champion has definitely opened up doors for me and opened up doors for other people about how they want to push themselves to become in this spot, you know? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. And obviously you have many signature products. Uh, with, I guess we're lucky. Um, you, you mentioned your V3 earlier in the live stream. Do you know when your deck's coming out, your new deck is coming out? Is it, wait, is it a deck or a scooter? Sorry, it's a whole scooter. Uh, so we've been we've been we've been promoting the deck because the deck is my actual signature product that I'm like creating. Like it's my right. my mm -hmm. actual thing. But the yeah. whole scooter is gonna be a John Marco scooter. It's just gonna have other lucky parts on the scooter. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And do you know when that's coming out? Well, with this whole quarantine thing, I honestly am not sure. Um, Lucky is trying to push it to come out as soon as possible once all this is over. I mean, times are really hard right now. Not many people are working. Not many people are making the money they were making before. But once this is all over, Lucky is going to push to get it out as soon as possible. Perfect, perfect. Well, we've got a few more minutes left of this uh, live stream. Obviously, I don't know if anyone knows, but we do get a limit of one hour on Instagram live stream. Oh, so, guys. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm enjoying this. I'm sure you are as well. Yeah, um, so, guys, on that note, I want you guys to um, flood the comment section right now. Get them last questions in. We've got ISA world champion John Marco Gaylos in the house right now. So if you want any of them questions answered, just whack them in the comment section right now, and I'll do my best to flick through them. Um, oh, Hang5 Gear says you can come to the grind shop and get them soon. Oh, soon. Oh, yeah. How soon is that? How soon at the grind shop? I want to know. I'm at uh, this too. <laughs> HP scoots, very nice question. What's your favorite scooter memory? My favorite scooter memory. Um, yeah. Besides winning worlds, because that was the best day of my life. I, I think my win. favorite scooter memory was when I won uh, when I won Pro Series for the first time. And all the pro riders picked me up and started throwing me up and down. Yeah, the nice. that was just so nice. cool. It was in so many videos and everything like that. It was just, it was awesome. Perfect. Oh, uh, Hang Five said hopefully mid May, by the way. So just a few weeks away. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um, Brandon J six six six. He said, by the way, he's an OG Oz rider and he's just a big fan. But he's just asked, what is your favorite trick? I mean, we've already had that one, right? It was uh. Was it cash roll? Oh, no, that's favorite flip combo, actually. What's your favorite trick? Yeah. More generic. Favorite trick? Um, I would. I honestly don't have one favorite trick because I feel like there's too many tricks out there to just have one. I would say cash roll is definitely one of my favorites. Um, flare whips are definitely one of my favorites. And any scooter flip. I love my scooter flips. Like nice. Buttercups, whip front scoots, front brise, anything. Overheads, like we call them nowadays. Overheads. I think that's a great word for it as well. Overheads. It's Overheads, yeah. That's a nice generic term, isn't it? Um, Phil just asked, are there any questions you want to ask us? Obviously, we we have the ISA right here. Are there any questions you would like to ask us, John? I do. I do. Um, I want to know 
I want to know what you guys have been up to. What's it like over there on the scene where you live? Um, how are you? Are you staying safe out there? I know times are crazy here. I want to know how they are out there. I mean, obviously for us, uh, things are just a bit up in the air at the moment. We're, for us, we need to just ensure that things are safe before we proceed with our uh, championship season. We are obviously, uh, hopefully, going ahead with the championship season this year. And I just hope that this whole COVID-19 situation gets sorted. Because, you know, the, the last thing we would ever want is to push the season out. Loads yeah. of people get COVID-19, you know, it would just be horrendous. So we need to make sure, obviously, that it's safe. And fingers crossed, you know, I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Fingers crossed we'll be safe and we'll be able to get things back moving and uh, going as soon as possible. But either way, we're just looking to go bigger and better than ever before. And we'd already started our season and we were doing a phenomenal job with our new ISA officials. And we had our live scoring all set up and that, as you probably see. We've been uh, we've been blowing things up and yeah we're still keeping busy though keeping busy and I think it's a nice way of interacting with the sport and you know our uh, our ISA world champions and whatnot but um, yeah I think you know we're just going going to keep busy and keep hopeful I think that's what we need to do and right we just stay safe that's for sure definitely yeah. yeah. So, guys, we've got just a couple more minutes left with John. So, last questions, maybe some quick fire questions, guys, just some real quick fire questions. And before John goes, obviously, we're going to be live again uh, this time next week. Hopefully, we'll have a uh, current ISA female world champion, uh, Rebecca Ortiz, in the house. Where I'll, I'll reach out to her. Fingers crossed, ring out, get out to her. But obviously, do come back and. Uh, Hope you guys enjoy these interviews, that's for sure. Uh, right, so we've got a couple more questions here. Do you have a dream trip? That's a good one. Dream, dream trip. trip? Yeah. I want to do I want to do a triple backflip before I yep. end screen. I want to do a triple backflip and I want to do a 1080 front flip. Nice. Love it. Perfect. I want to do um, it to a regular ramp though. I don't want to do it to a mega ramp. Oh, okay. All right, now that that's woof. That's that's really that's just step that up right there. Wow. Okay. Nice. I like that. Very optimistic, that. Uh, Dal Squeeze, you said favorite grind combos. Favorite grind combos. Yeah. Um, I would have to say back lip slides, uh, like whip back lip, bar back lip. Um, I like doing board back lips on rails. Um, yeah. And I really like doing uh, front 50-50s on quarter. I love nice. those. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I feel like... Um, I feel like Joe Armstrong would appreciate that. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. He told me um, I'd do all of that. <laughs> uh, someone said triple flare question mark. Can you steal flare. it from Jordan Clark? Um, I'm gonna leave that one to Jordan. <laughs> Jordan's got that one. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm definitely not trying that after I saw what happened to him at the last worlds. Yeah. But yeah, That's definitely. Perfect. I'm definitely gonna leave that one to Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> okay right i think we're gonna have to end it there we are literally coming up to the hour now but i just want to say a huge thank you john for sticking by for this interview it's been awesome to have you in here um any yeah. last words for the fans um stay safe guys i know times are hard right now but the best thing you could do is stay home stay safe hang with your family and just be positive wait till this all is over and then Get back to riding your scooter, keep progressing, and have fun with everything. And obviously, guys, pick up a John Marco signature scooter as definitely, well. Definitely. Definitely. Follow my Instagram, follow you need Instagram. someone to do in lockdown, you know, just purchase one of them. It's, it's pretty oh, yeah. simple. Yeah, yeah. Ride like the world champion. Okay, John, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to say goodbye to you first, then I'll say goodbye to all the viewers as well. But, John, thank you very much. You stay safe as well and keep popping out the clips i'm looking forward to seeing the more uh, seeing more of them from your personal skate park cheers john thank you, thank you. i hope yeah. you stay safe hope everything's good over there and i hope to see you soon take care okay. everyone else i hope you enjoyed that live stream interview we're gonna be live again this time next week fingers crossed we'll have rebecca ortiz in the house but if not i'm sure we'll have someone amazing for you guys thank you so much for all your questions and we'll see you again next week.